Let's bring him on, Mark Sanchez, who has to put up with our nonsense. Fox Sports yeah, NFL right. analyst. Yeah. It's great to see Mark Sanchez, so as good. always. He comes in a little hot on a Monday. Oh, man. You fired up. Those, those bets didn't come through, I can tell. <laughs> he sometimes lets his bets get in the way of his emotions you, on a Monday. If you never, are you leveraging the college tuition, or what's going on here? Do we need call. to have a deeper... They have hotlines for stuff yeah. like this. Yes, they do. So... Um, you know, I, I said, and I, I want you to give us your experience. It's very, usually I watch a team play, especially a high-profile team like Kansas City. I've seen them play a lot. And they had some issues throughout the year. And then suddenly they cleaned them all up for the playoff game. Oh. And I was like, where are the drops? Where are the penalties? Where's the protection issues? I was blown away by the fact that they could cinch all their issues up in that high-leverage situation. The really good teams with experience like that, with a head coach like Andy Reid and his – tenure there don't forget he's taken two franchises to multiple super bowls championship games like this is high level i mean he's it right, right. In, in in coaching they find a way to avoid beating themselves and whatever it takes i mean kelsey had some drops the last few weeks yeah dude's nails right and the biggest moments on the biggest stage they find a way and it doesn't always have to be the big sexy plays downfield mahomes doesn't have to throw for 400 yards i mean what was he, 17 of 24, something like that? You know, he's, no, yeah, I mean, 17 completions. Crazy, yeah, like nothing crazy, not over 20 completions, which you kind of expect from right. him. But it was going to be that kind of game. They knew Buffalo was – it's a blue-collar team. There's a tough team. There's a tough environment. Whatever it takes, we got to go get this win. And the formula for victory was a little different than maybe a shootout with some other teams where it was going to be 45 to 43, last second field goal wins the game kind of deal. And so they've adapted their mentality, and they just find a way to do it. 15 is unbelievable. I mean, g give me his stats. We have a full screen of his stats. He's played 16 games now in the playoffs. Look at this. That's, so a, for that's a full regular season. Of playoff football. Of against, against just the playoff football. Teams. Against good teams. There's no slouches on here. Okay. Okay, you're playing the top 12 teams or top 10 teams before right. the and playoff And best change. coordinators. Best coordinators, best quarterback. Like, this is the best of the best, and that's... Essentially like an MVP season. <laughs> 38 <laughs> touchdowns, seven picks. Are you kidding me? I mean. And, and, you have to remember. And this might not be the best team he's been on in six years. By the way, six straight AFC championship games. It's, we went the first two years. That was exhaust. Like, that's exhausting. What it's a lot getting that far in the playoffs. He's done it six years in a row. These guys that do it year after year, like Tom Brady and Mahomes, Year after year, your season goes so long. Right, right. I mean, there's guys starting to work out now for next season. <laughs> and these guys are still playing. So, I yeah. mean, this is now, and, and an my, incredible run, man. My, my takeaway is Buffalo's fine. The window's not closed. But I do think. You hope. I thought we were fine after year two. We didn't sniff the playoffs after that. We went eight and eight, and then it wasn't even close. And what? So, I, I mean, now, that was a different situation, but. You just assume, just like C.J. Stroud said, you know, it felt kind of like a failure. Like we didn't, you just assume you're going to be right back there. You know, Josh Allen and the Bills assume they're going to be right back well, there. And, and all Super signs, Bowl loser. There you go. Yeah. All signs point to those things, yeah. but you just never know. Coordinators change. Head coaching change. Personnel change. Boom. Pretty soon you're on another team. You're like, whoa, wait, what just happened? We were just there. <laughs> what, what happened? You right. know, so th there's no guarantee. That's why these... These losses at this point in the season are just like, oh, it's just a gut punch, man. I feel for these guys. You, I was saying this. I, we all know Kyle Shanahan forgets more football in a day than I've known my <laughs> whole life. So I would say this. And I think all great coaches, um, they have strengths, they have weaknesses. And coaches, Jimmy Johnson would tell you, this is what I was sure. good at, this not as much. And so with Kyle Shanahan, he, he loves it, that play sheet. Mm -hmm. And he's loyal to it. And the criticism I've heard from people that really know the Niners is sometimes Debo gets hurt. It's raining. Brock's struggling with uh, ball protection. Sometimes you want a coach to go, hey, this isn't working. We're going to adapt here. I thought San Francisco kind of stayed to, okay, we're going to spread it out. And all of a sudden it's like, well, Debo's gone. That's not as effective. Is it a fair criticism to say that sometimes coaches, the really good ones, they stick to that play sheet. They're absolutely sure it's going to work they may be a little less willing to move off it over the course of a game, or is that just nonsense? No, I, I don't think it's complete nonsense, but I don't – I think my, my biggest criticism of the 49ers, who I think are the best in the league um, and are right where they're supposed to be, um, is 
if you look back at the game, and I think I think Shanahan might admit this if you really had to like pin him down and right. make him say it, but like I just thought they would have run the ball a little bit more. I thought they threw it a little more than I anticipated. That's right. But they also weren't nearly as efficient on first and second down as they had been. Yeah. And it, it felt like a lot of third and longs. It felt like um, they were pressing a little bit at times. I think we have a great clip of Brock showing that he's pressing a yeah. little bit. I think some of the situations are supposed to dictate, you know, you have a read and, and, a, and a progression on yeah. certain plays. Depending on the situation of the game, you throw that out the window, and there's a certain way you handle those plays in certain situations. Right. Even though I know what it says on day one of right, our right, install right. sheet of the playbook. This is number one. This is number two. This is number three. Here's the design coverage we want this play for. Well, all that doesn't matter when it's third and 10 as right. opposed to first and 10 in the middle of the right. field. Fourth quarter, how many timeouts are left, how much time's on the clock. All that stuff matters. And so I just felt like they played themselves into a position where, oh, shoot, we got we to gotta make up some ground. And they needed a game-winning drive by yeah. Brock Purdy and the team. So I don't think they wanted that to be their formula to win, <laughs> but it ended up being that way. And they have the talent and the personnel to handle it. And then when it came time to, you know, real crunch time, yeah. they executed at a high level and made it. But I think there's some, you know, plenty of criticism to go around there, but nothing fatal, nothing they can't overcome. So, um, you know, credit to them for finding a way when it wasn't your best, you know, your fastball is not really, yeah. you know, hammering people. Like you're not getting all the strikeouts you're used to. Okay. Well, let's see what we got with our off speed stuff and we'll figure it out. And, yeah. and I thought they found a way to do it. You know, it, green Bay is interesting because, uh, Jordan's a little more far than Aaron. Aaron, I always thought of as, I think the last throw pushes that narrative harder too, but yes, he, Aaron was very precision based. Mm -hmm. um, Brett was a little more make a play based. Yeah, and more I, post snap. Yeah, and I feel Jordan's a little bit of that. I'm totally comfortable with it because I do think he follows the coaching. Um, like all quarterback, you know, Josh Allen can be erratic. Sure. Yeah, I, I love it. Is there anything about Jordan Love that would worry you? He can sail it, he can be a tad erratic. I mean, what um, do you see? No, I, I loved his progression. The, the last part of the season, the final six, seven games. I mean, the guy was playing at his best and Why? they found, uh, I think his, uh, timing, I think the elevation of players around him, I think, uh, the wicks, the reads, yeah, the, yeah. uh, maybe not as much Watson, but dubs for sure. Yeah. All those guys really improved and took the next step in their progression. And I think that helped him the two tight ends. Uh, Kraft and Musgrave yeah. really came a lot. I mean, those guys came out of nowhere. We yeah. called one of their games against the chargers and the Chargers, you know, were struggling all game, and the Packers end up, like, overtaking them. But at no point you thought, okay, this is a playoff team in Green Bay. Right. You watch them towards the end of the year, and I'm like, man, these guys look a lot different than the game right. I called. Right. So, obviously, something was happening there, and it was going in the right direction. They didn't get the results they wanted, but the process was right. So, I think his process is right. I love his mechanics. If anything, I mean, the biggest criticism is that last throw, just that decision, right? First yeah. and 10, game on the line at least exhaust all four of your downs. You know what I mean? At, yeah. the, at worst case, you go 0 for 4 on that drive, and that's it. You yeah. turn over on downs and, and game over. Nobody's going to be, you know, like, God, you blew it. Nobody's going to say, what if we had another down? Well, maybe. I mean, maybe somebody catches the ball. Maybe somebody misses a tackle. It's just the way Kansas City forces you to defend them every down. That's good And point. we're going to use, we're going to exhaust every, all of our opportunities. Right. You're going to have to stop us every single time. <laughs> and we're not going to hurt ourselves, right? Like, yeah. You just give up those Mahomes three plays. No playoff. And, yeah, and who knows what happens on those next three plays? You know, guys get injured, guys yeah. fall down, guys run into each other. Crazy stuff happens every single play. So that would be one of them is that decision because it was clearly just a dis bad decision. Yeah. To throw that ball, and then the other stuff, I would just really hammer his mechanics in the pocket because it gets a little loose with his footwork and yeah. stuff. But it's you know the 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 result is there and the arm talent's so good. You're like, okay, I'm good with that. I just want to keep you right. Let's not get too far off the rails here, yeah. but he is one impressive player, and what a heck of a first season for him. Um, nice performance by Baker. You know, it, it's um, the thing I like about Jared Goff, and I think the Rams now regret it. They kind of blamed him for some stuff. And th the truth was, um, the Rams, when they got to that Super Bowl, it wasn't one of McVay's greatest coaching matchups against Belichick. Sure. He sort of got worked in that. I, I do like... I do like sort of Jared sort of proving to everybody this. I'm part of this too. Like there was this Goff succeeds because of McVay. And sure. I remember watching him win a shootout against Mahomes on Monday Night Football one yeah. time. I'm like, okay, it can't all be Ma it can't all be McVay. Yeah. Take me to the process. Is you know somebody else gets credit, you're doubted. Jared's not a big. He's not going to. 
He's not a self-promoter. And all, yeah. I mean, he literally, he lives in the Bay here. You never see him. I mean, that was his chance. He bounced the Rams out of the playoffs. That was his chance to say, see, you know what I mean? Like, I'm better or whatever. Right. I think bottom line is the trade worked out for both teams, <laughs> both organizations, right. both individual players. It worked out great. I think um, he has an incredible team around him. And other than maybe the one throw early in the game, it was like first or second drive of the game, the interception that the Bucs should have had in the end zone. Yeah. Other than that throw, my man was nails. Yeah. And it's his body language. It's his demeanor. He's just um, handling everything in stride. I mean, just wore that trade on the chin for like two years and yeah. doubted and doubted and doubted. And Dan Campbell breathed some life into the kid. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of that too is – his offense coordinator, Ben Johnson, and also his quarterback coach, Mark Brunel, was with us. Great quarterback in his own right. Oh, yeah. Uh, national champ at Washington. Yeah. Um, and he was one of our quarterbacks in the room with us, with the Jets, for my last two years there, or last three years there. And when you talk about a guy who can coach body language and your attitude and demeanor and pump you up in the right situations, be the you know shoulder to cry on when you're just – gutted and you just blew it um you know when you lose a game the guy you run to right away i mean he was that guy for me Brunel? personally mark brunel and he has been so good for jared and his approach his demeanor his footwork you can tell what they're working on everything you see on tape you can tell i yeah, can't <laughs> I, I know what drills they're doing okay. one because i know brunel and two because i've worked with them hard man in the off season you know during the season like this guy this guy had us over his house with his whole family, all the quarterbacks, like every Tuesday for pizza night when we get the game plan and we have pizza night with the Brunel family. Like we were one of their family, me, Kevin O'Connell, Mark Brunel. Like he's that kind of guy to put his arm around you and be your dad, big brother, uncle at the right time, you know? And, um, and then he'll tell you straight up too. He'll find you for, we, he used to find me <laughs> for palms up. When you look to the sidelines and you big time your coach because you didn't hear something, instead of going like this or looking like, if you go palms up, he's like, you don't big time the coordinator like that, ever. You don't do that in front of thousands of people, millions of people watching the TV. If you go palms up again, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, I'm fine your butt. So I'm like, what? <laughs> so, and the fine money. It does make sense. No, totally. It's a total big time move. It's not cool to the coordinator, right? When you look over, oh man, like pass the blame. No, dude, own it. Wear it. Give me one of these. Say it again, please. Call time out. Figure it out appropriately, like a professional. Don't embarrass anybody else. You know, that was his, he's an old school dude, man. And so the fine money would go to our quarterback dinner at the end of the year. <laughs> so it was good though. Yeah, that was like hundred bucks a pot, man. <laughs> no more of that. Hi everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.